the Wisconsin Badgers absolutely beat the brakes off the Maryland Terrapins. Nice little matinee game we had on Thursday. Are the Badgers back? Is this the moment we have been waiting for? I got some thoughts. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with a six-pack. The Scotty Six-Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Summers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Summers, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six-Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Wisconsin beats Maryland 87-56 in its opening game of the Big Ten tournament, and frankly, it was not even that close. This game was over. Early, Wisconsin had a 40-point lead at one point in this game. An unbelievable display of three-point shooting prowess that this team has not had all year. Wisconsin shot 16 of 25 from beyond the three-point arc. A 64% clip. It was mighty, mighty, mighty impressive. And Wisconsin has to turn around and play another game just 24 hours later against the Northwestern Wildcats. We will get into that just a little bit as, as well. Um, but this game is a little bit hard to glean some things from because although Wisconsin won, they won in a matter that was so antithetical to the way that this offense was run for so long during this season. This was not a good three-point shooting Wisconsin team for, for a very long They ranked, you know, mid-150s in the country in three-point shooting percentage. And for them to come out and hit six of six to start the game was just a pace beater for for them in this one and it was contagious and just went on and on and on. Now, there are some things to take away from who made those three pointers that I thought was incredibly valuable. Uh Steven Crowell hit 3 of 3. Um <laughs> I don't think he's going to be a perfect 3 for 3 going forward, but those are valuable three point takes and makes for him as someone who's shooting can do a lot for this Wisconsin offense. Similarly, uh, Nolan winter took one and made one. There was a very, uh, comedic moment in the first half when he dialed up that three point attempt. Of course, Wisconsin had everybody making threes at this point in the game and left Nolan winter way out from NBA three-point range, his defender dropped back down. You hear someone on the Maryland bench shout, no, he can shoot too. And Nolan Winter drains an NBA range three, uh, the freshman. It just mightily, mightily, mightily impressive performance and also a bit of levity in the moment when you realize this is what it takes to win games on back-to-back -back days is you have to be dialed in to the film, and it's incredibly hard to pay attention to every single one of the details as you have your benchmates shouting keys to the matchup at you off the bench, telling you, no, Nolan Winter can shoot. You can't back off of him uh, from there. It's very difficult. But for Wisconsin to come out and keep its foot on the gas, and after Wisconsin entered the second half, uh, already up very big. Uh, Wisconsin was leading at the half, was leading 47-26. Um, and for them to keep their foot on the gas what was huge. They scored the first 18 points of the second half unanswered, carried over a run from the first half to score 23 unanswered points, held Maryland to 39% shooting from the floor, and didn't turn the ball over too many times, you know, 13 turnovers, maybe a couple more than, than Greg guard would want, but ultimately not that bad. Uh, this was also not just a, a three point shooting performance. This was a, a performance of running Wisconsin's offense and tallying up a whopping 25 assists in the game, 14 assists in the first half 
Chucky Hepburn with seven first half assists uh, only gets one in the second half. But the, the way Wisconsin was able to turn up its offense and take advantage of just impeccable spacing was because of who was making those threes. If Nolan Winter is going to make threes, if Stephen Crowell is going to be a genuine three-point threat going three for three in the game, that is going to open up this Wisconsin offense in, in a way that they haven't had since the very beginning of the season where Stephen Crowell was taking and making a good handful of three-pointers. For Wisconsin to be able to do this while also having players who can get to the hoop, while having Tyler Wall who can post up and be very impressive, AJ Store who can drive the lane, get to the hoop, John Blackwell with timely cuts getting to the hoop, which he displayed a mighty prowess for this one as well. Six of 11 from the field, four of six from three. He made his first four of the game, I think it was. Wisconsin's offense is a juggernaut at that point and can still hold a not terrible Maryland team to 56 points. Look, this isn't a great Maryland team. This isn't an NCAA tournament team, but a, a Big Ten team with some genuine talent. Yes, missing one of its key bench pieces on a team that is not very deep. There are lots of caveats that come with this game, but there's something to be said for building some confidence in a blowout win over a team that you only beat by four on your home court just a few weeks ago. For Wisconsin to come out and have this performance says a lot for what it might be able to do moving forward. And it says a lot for some of the guys who got real minutes in this game. Because Wisconsin was up so big, basically for the last 10 minutes of the second half, I do not think Wisconsin had more than one starter on the floor the rest of the way. It was all bench pieces. Uh, John Blackwell was running the point at, at a certain mark in time, and I think that was an all-bench lineup. Connor Siegen comes off the bench and has nine points in his first three minutes of game action. He ended up with nine total in nine minutes on three of five shooting. One of those was an excellent drive to the hoop for an and one bucket. He drained two three pointers. One of them standing behind Kamari McGee right in front of him. Look, Connor Sejan, who also in, in an interview with uh, Badger Blitz rivals, Wisconsin Badger site, he confirmed that he's coming back. And that surprised me a little bit. He, he's coming back. He's not going to transfer for him to get off the bench in this one after not seeing a ton of time lately and drain some shots, build some confidence that he can do it uh, is, is going to be huge for him. And it's not just the shots. He was also doing a really, really impressive job in the pick and roll as well. Uh, he and Carter Gilmore and yeah, say what you will about Carter Gilmore. He had a weird game, uh, including getting a technical foul, uh, but also making a three pointer weird Carter Gilmore game. But the way Connor Asijan was able to execute on the pick and roll. And yes, Maryland did not really cover Carter Gilmore rolling to the hoop on the pick and roll. But Asijan saw that capitalized that and fed the ball into Gilmore a few different times. That was really What's the word I'm looking for? Um, really encouraging, given that Asijin could have been in there and just trying to get up shots and, and prove that, hey, I can, I can make these baskets. For he, he, him to willingly pass the ball, uh, I, I thought was very meaningful for his play going forward and, and did a lot. There's really only, I mean, a couple of guys that didn't have the most impressive of games. Max Klesman had three points on one of two shooting, uh, but had five assists. So like, I can't really be mad. He just has not been scoring since he went unconscious against Indiana. It just, it just hasn't returned. Um, Tyler wall, only four points on one of five shooting. He tried to get in on a three point action with uh, a miss of his own, but Badgers didn't really need him. It, it just felt like he he wasn't much of a factor, not because he couldn't be, but because Wisconsin didn't 
need him to be. AJ H- H- Store with 16 points, two of four shooting, including a very deep three. Chucky Hepburn, 10 points on four of four shooting, including two of two from three, including one from, oh my gosh, just way down, like not even downtown Minneapolis, downtown St. Paul, downtown, uh, pick a suburb, <laughs> like <laughs> downtown Lakeville. Uh, all these badgers shot incredibly well and, and held Maryland to 256 points on 39% shooting from the floor. The only bugaboo was Maryland did shoot six of 15, 40% from three. Um, some of that shot making, some of that is making shots late in the game, but in the first half when Wisconsin was really dialed in, Maryland shot 42.9% from the floor, just two of seven on three pointers. So th- those numbers helped out a little bit in, in the three point department in the second half, make, making four of eight and also didn't really allow uh, Maryland to get to the free throw line and shoot many from the charity stripe, only 12 made free throws and Maryland takes and makes a ton of free throws. That is a huge part of Maryland's game. So it was for Wisconsin to play a relatively clean game and not let Maryland get theirs from the free throw line. Wisconsin with a three point edge from the charity stripe in this one. It says a lot of encouraging things about their ability to, to play this matchup. Also just absolutely killed the Terps on the glass 42 to 25 grabbing 12 more defensive rebounds. Some of that is all the shots missed, of course, uh, from Maryland, but you got to force them into those shots, right? Going, looking ahead a little bit to Northwestern. And yeah, this is going to be a little bit shorter, uh, (laughs) definitely shorter than yesterday's because it is 4 a.m. 4 a.m. on Friday, March 15th. I have been up for a million hours over the last, uh, few days and weeks North- northwestern gets the double by finishes f- uh fourth in the big 10 wisconsin matches up with them according to ken palm wisconsin is a three point projected favorite uh so so a very close game but these two teams played close back in january but that's the only time they played wisconsin winning that game by eight points at the Kohl center and it's gonna be the boo booey show I don't know what to say other than it will be the Boo Booey show. Northwestern kind of is what you think it is. It has a not fantastic defense, but a really electric offense led by an incredible, incredible, incredible player in Boo Booey who is a big, aggressive, can score point guard who, I mean, nobody in the big 10 wants to mess with quite frankly, the, the big thing for Wisconsin in this one is that they have to defend the three point line. Northwestern could kill them in this one, Wisconsin, the 349th ranked three point defense, Northwestern, the sixth rank three point offense in the country. Boo Boo is making 43% of his threes on the season. Ryan Langborg is making 41% of his threes on the season. Ty Berry is making 43% of his three pointers on the season. This is a team that can shoot the three and make the three. They do not turn the ball over as well. A team very, very, very averse to turning the ball over. The only real bugaboo that Northwestern has is its inability to stay out of foul trouble. They allow teams to shoot more free throws per field goal attempt than almost anybody in the country. This was the way both of their games against Purdue went the one that they won. And then the other one that went to overtime in West Lafayette, Zach Eady shot a ton of free throws. That is just the defensive style. This team, I guess, chooses to play given that, they seemingly do not have the ability to match up very, very well with a lot of other folks. Um, they also don't have the best three point defense. So I'm sure that uh, Northwestern is not very confident after watching Wisconsin's three point offensive performance yesterday against Maryland that, that could, if that sticks and I don't think that it will, uh, but if that sticks, that, that could be a big, big, big boon for, for the Badgers against Northwestern. That game is going to be played at 1.30 uh, on 
today, Friday. And if Wisconsin wins, they will likely advance to play the Purdue Boilermakers. Other things going on in Wisconsin Badgers dumb today. Um, Wisconsin's pro day is being held with NBA draft prospects from the Badgers, as well as some other local schools, notable Badgers working out Braylon Allen, Travion Bla- Blaylock, the, the defensive back Tanner Bordellini uh, is going to do a couple of drills himself. Braylon Allen is not planning on running at the pro day. Um, I found that interesting, uh, to find out Tanner Mordecai is going to go through a slew of drills as well after he didn't get a combine invite. Maybe Muma Jong Meta, who did not have a great day at the NFL combine is going to be running through all of the drills again at pro day, hoping to, you know, improve his stock as an undrafted free agent does not surprise me that Tanner Bordellini is not going to go through many of, of the drills on deck uh, because he, you know, just really did kill it at pro day at uh, the combine. There's no need for, for him to go ahead. The only thing that he didn't do very well at the combine was, and I want to make sure that I get this right was yeah the the bench press and that is the one drill that he is going to be doing again at pro day as well as the the positional drills um shoot me a follow on the website formerly known as twitter at kedrick stubbers also stay tuned to, to badger notes uh because i will be at pro day at the mclean center covering that for badger notes today uh as you are listening to this probably already there in <laughs> just a short number of hours oh man it's 4 5 a.m um If you're keeping up with the Wisconsin women's hockey team still, uh, we have an excellent preview episode for Wisconsin's regional final game, seeking a berth in the frozen four. That episode was published yesterday uh, with Noah Clark of 1070, the game who is on the radio broadcast for Wisconsin women's hockey games. We did that. And St. Lawrence won the regional first round game to advance to play Wisconsin in the regional final on Saturday, St. Lawrence winning the game. One nothing in overtime should be fascinating going forward. So tomorrow, well, I'm sure we'll be talking Wisconsin basketball uh, on on this show, uh, assuming there is something interesting to talk about. I can't imagine there would not be. Uh, we'll, we'll be talking that, and then on Saturday, or sorry, on, on Sunday rather. It's Selection Sunday. It's Selection Sunday. This is the Second to last time we are going to, we are going to speak. I'm going to talk in your earballs before selection Sunday. It'll be fun. Um, we should have a reaction pod in your feed later on Saturday, uh, breaking down Wisconsin's hopeful birth in the frozen four. Um, that isn't in your feed Saturday. That'll be in your feed Sunday morning. And then a reaction to Wisconsin's NCAA tournament fate on Sunday evening after the selection show at 5 p.m. That's going to do it for today's episode of the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for following along with me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stubbers, and subscribing to the podcast on your podcast platform of choice, Spotify, YouTube. Leave a review while you're there. Really, really, really does help out the show. One of the biggest things that you can do uh, for this show, if you like it, is to leave a kind review. You can also watch this show on Spotify, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. While you're there, hit that subscribe button and the like button. That way you get notified every time we put do stuff into your feed. And we are on here all the time these days. Just content every day. We'll talk to you again tomorrow on Wisconsin.